Welcome, everybody, and thank you, all of you, and especially Stephen, for giving me such a wonderful 25th anniversary. I... I have heard of people getting tanked on their anniversaries, but actually having a tank is quite something. I want to talk now about what is, in a way, has been the underswell, if we use the C motif, of the entire conference, and it's certainly very important to today's sessions. It's what I call surfing for emotion. You know, the subject of emotion, the feeling that tugs at the heart about an object or an experience, is key to luxury today. It isn't enough just to have something that's beautiful or attractive or expensive. It has to be something that makes a connection with the person who is looking at it. You know, we all have more than enough of everything to fill our homes and our closets. We don't need this stuff, but we want it. In many cases, an experience, an unexpected event, or a well-planned vacation can seem more appealing than yet another physical possession. Stirring up emotion is the subject of much of this section, whether we're talking about exquisite children's clothes, as we will we'll be in a moment, fine jewellery, or a YouTube film that makes the heart race. Emotion can make us cry. It can also make us buy. Let's look today at some of the different ways to move purse strings and souls. First, before we start, I'm just going to um, introduce Marie Chantal of Greece, and then we're going to see a video, and then I'm going to invite her to come up on stage. Uh, Marie Chantal decided to start an upscale children's clothes business when the third of her five children was born. Drawing on her inspiration of a childhood in Hong Kong under British colonial rule, she designed her first collections. But with retail in her blood from growing up with the family's duty-free stores, and she has recently joined her father on the board of DFS, she has added yet another layer to her career. Let's have a look at the video and see what she has achieved. Chantal, welcome. So, were these all your children we saw photographed there? No, no, my children are much older now. So, Marie Chantal, in spite of being Marie Chantal of Greece now, you were born and bred in Asia. What did that mean to you? What is the legacy of being brought up in Hong Kong left for you personally, but particularly for your range of clothes? Well, firstly, Susie, thank you so much for having me up here. I feel terribly grown up, and um, it's a great honor and a privilege to be here. As you know, I grew up in Hong Kong. Oh, my mic. Could somebody adjust the mic or bring over? Excuse me. Techno people. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yeah? OK. So thank you, Susie, for having me here. <laughs> and um, I grew up in Hong Kong. I moved 
Well, I was actually born in London, and I moved to Hong Kong when I was six months old. My father was busy building a business there, the duty free shops. Um, and my childhood was incredibly, um, um, it was beautiful. You know, it was under the British colonial rule. There were so many influences that were happening around me um, from you know, the culture, the architecture, the food, the, the detail, the Chinese craftsmanships, and all that. It was definitely something that sparked my creative input and that really led me to have this career in children's design. And when we see this adorable video that you've just shown us, is there any element there that we wouldn't know came from um, Hong Kong, but, but does inside your head? Didn't you tell me something about the gingham? Yes, I have. Um, I think there's a little story in, every, in everything that I design. There's a little story of me. It's, you know, my childhood. It was growing up, going to school. I had a little green gingham uh, pinafore uniform. So gingham is very important. And so I bring a lot of those elements and those stories into my life and into the designs. Um, and then I have, obviously have my five children, so they very much are uh, helpful in telling me what I should do or design. Um, if we take out the equation for the moment of your children, which we can come back to later, what about your um, clientele? Who are they? I mean, these days, children's clothes are a bit different, aren't they? Because you know, I'm now a grandmother, and I believe I'm one of the first of the um, working grandmothers still working after 25 years. Um, but this makes a difference, doesn't it? That we're not talking about grannies now knitting their own little clothes for grandchildren. And of course, working mothers also, out of guilt or out of pleasure at spending their money, will also buy children's clothes. Does all this come into your clientele? Well, it's really interesting. I think you know, there's the six-pocket effect with um, children's wear. And I think um, you know, it's the mothers, the traveling fathers, the aunts, the uncles, the sisters, so many people who want to, to be able to, to gift and buy beautiful clothes for children. I think it's a business that has changed a lot. And, um, if you look at our customers, you know, they've grown up today with luxury, and so it's very important to dress their children well. I think um, it's evolved, and it's, um, it's so nice to be able to, you know, to dress children beautifully. What's your analysis of your global customer? So would you get Chinese travelers in your London store that we went to see that isn't, you know, on, on a main street at all? Would you get these people coming to you to find you as a destination? We have. It's evenly split. I mean, it's, it's been incredible. I started the business about 14 years ago when I was pregnant with my third child. And um, I started the business when I was living in America. And then when I moved to London, I brought it with me. A bit complicated, but we managed to do it. And so I had, you know, at the very early days, I had a really nice core American customer. Who, who, is it better? Yes. Thank you. I had a really nice, sorry, I had a really nice um, American customer base. And then when I moved the uh, business over to England, it was very British based. And, and then as the company grew and as, you know, since I've been around for a while, it's been great because now we have so many international customers. And then, you know, with e-commerce as well, we've been able to, it's been able to open up um, new borders for us. If one of these traveling fathers or mothers thinks this is a brilliant idea to take home, can they go out in Singapore and find your um, children's clothes? Yes, we're about to, um, we're going into a department store with uh, Kids 21 here, so we're super excited and, you know, I've been really important for me to find the right, you know, uh, key partners in the business because I take such pleasure and pride in building this business with a lot of, you know, effort and dedication and, and so I want to really find the right people to help me as I move into uh, Asia. And tell me, Marie Chantal, what is your feeling about e-commerce? You know, can something as special as children's clothes, I'm talking at your level, not just run-of-the-mill things, can they really be bought like that online? Well, if you look at, you know, what Natalie Massenet did 10 years ago, nobody would have believed that, you know, when she was selling her vision, that you could buy women's wear, luxury clothing online. Um, I think today, you know, mothers are so incredibly busy and we don't have the time really to, to drag our children along to go shopping. And so online has been a great, it's a great vehicle for us. 
And we're seeing that there's this incredible, like I said before, we're able to enter new markets where we don't have a presence. And, um, and I think it's, you know, I think it's very useful. It's a very useful tool for a mother. So you're in control of your online site. You, I mean, other people may also have it, but, but if somebody wants to get something from the, the Marie Chantal collection, they can go online to your site and buy from that. Yes, and we, that's you know, something I really like to be you know, ahead of the times. And I think it's important to have the three channels of sales, so bricks and mortar, and then it's you know, a great wholesale distribution, and then the online business is, is key. And um, you know, as long as you keep the integrity and the detail and the quality and the customer service of the brand, that's what I try to do is to give the customer that experience. Um, you can buy internationally. We've, we've been able to, to really focus on that. And um, we're talking of international sales. There, there's a little bit of heritage in your family about that. I mean, your father's DFS, the duty-free stores, have been so successful that LVMH, them again, um, bought a majority stake in the company. And um, you told me, I love this story, that, that you spent your weekends when you were a, a sort of teenager going and helping in these stores every Saturday. Your new role on the board is going to be a bit different, isn't it, than, than seeing the customers come by on Saturday and being nice to them. What do you think you can bring to the company on the board? Well... You know, I grew up with a business, and so, and I grew up in Asia, and I saw my father build this vision of his. I mean, he started before I was born, but he was still very much in the building phases. And the business has changed so much. You know, 50 years ago when he started, it was very much a model based on the downtown, the airport store, sorry. And, um, and then he developed kind of a, you know, a downtown store to a company and to complement the airports, so you could offer that experience to the traveling customer. Um, today we're in a very different position. We're in three continents. We have 420 stores. Um, I mean, it's an incredible business. We're in 15 airports and we have 15 major gallerias which offer the most beautiful luxury goods. We carry over 700 brands. It's, um, it's, it's an incredible business. And what I can offer, well, first of all, I'm the only female board member on the board, so that's Shocking. great. <laughs> and I think you know, being a woman it's, and being in, in retail and, and designing and doing all of that, I can bring an element, I think, of creativity and maybe a little bit more of the family heritage. So the emotional side, I think, is very important. I think businesses need a lot of soul today in order to survive. And I think it's important to have also a family member be on the board for the stewardship of the, uh, of the family and the business. We hear the story that DFS, because, because of the Chinese travellers, is going to open in, across Europe. Is this something you could confirm? Well, there's a lot of exciting opportunities and news for us. Um, like I said, the business is you know, in a very you know, wonderful position today. Um, and it's, it's only a, you know, an evolution for us to be in a, in a country like, in, you know, to be in Europe. So it's something that we're, we're looking towards, but there's nothing that I can confirm. Um, I'd like to go back to your um, children, because you have dedicated some of your clothes and some of your designs to your children. Tell us about that. Well, I have five children, and um, Olympia, the eldest, is 17 now. And so I, I really wanted to have a little bit of something, you know, to dedicate, whether it be you know, a dress or a little shoe, or a handbag or something to the children. I have five of them, so they all have to be kind of, you know. But then I have the daughter, Olympia. She's my only girl, so she has um, this little ballet shoe that we designed that has been, you know, bestseller. It's called the Olympia shoe. And then the logo that I designed um, for the brand, it's like a little, looks like a little prince, anyway. Mm -hmm. It was that we call the Tino. The Tino. That's my number two son, Tino. So there's always a little bit of, you know, my children in the brand. Um, talking about little princes and princesses, you don't like to flaunt it, but you are the, crown, the princess of Greece with your husband, Prince um, Pavlos. Is the secret of selling children's clothes in the final estimate of it all that to parents, every child is a little prince or princess? Well, I think to every parent, I mean, you know, their children are their little princesses or princes, and I think there's a little bit of that element of fantasy and dress up and, you know, what little girl doesn't want to dress up in a little princess dress. So we try and keep it, you know, fun and fantasy and a little bit of this magic. 
Um, with your Asian knowledge of your um, childhood and knowledge also um, today, do you think that the Asian attitude to children is different from, say, an American or European attitude? I think it's changing. I think it's really people feel that they, you know, they want to express their, you know, they want to show their children and they want to dress them well. I think a um, little bit more so in Asia, but I think it's changing. I think you see, we're seeing elements of this, you know, extension of luxury towards the children's wear market. And um, I think people aren't as afraid to, to show their children, to, sh to show that they can dress them well. Um, uh, well, I, I don't w wish to disagree with you since you know so much more about children's clothes than myself. But I would say that mostly through um, the US, for example, children are dressed extremely casually. Are you suggesting that that perhaps, let, let's take men and boys because that's an interesting example. Is it because the generation of baby boomers in America of men still dress the um, Bill Clinton way very casually and therefore um, male children are dressed in quite a casual way. I mean, they're mostly in jeans and yeah. sweatshirts, aren't they? It is, but we have, you know, we have a, a customer that really enjoys beautiful clothes, and that's what I want to be able to, to offer. There is a casual element to our designs as well, but it's, I want to keep it nice and elegant. It was the way I was dressed growing up in Hong Kong. And yes, you know, I would run around and play and get dirty, and, and I had my play clothes, but... I think it's so nice to see children well dressed. It's 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 beautiful, and I think they should. I mean, in America, you know, they spend so much money on their art and their and on themselves. So why shouldn't they, you know, do the same for their children and and dress them well? Hear that, you Americans! <laughs> so we'll, you go out and buy some smart clothes for your kids while you're here. <laughs> Um, you mentioned when we were talking, um, when I was interviewing before for the a paper, about your mother and the influence she had on you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So my mother is from Ecuador, and um, she has an incredible, incredible eye for detail. And so she dressed, you know, she, I talk a lot about how she dressed us, but it was everything. It was how, you know, how she lived her life and how Hong Kong influenced her, really. I mean, she was, you know, young South American she moved to Hong Kong when she was 19. She had my sister when she was 20. So she was very young, and it was like ch Hong Kong was changing so you know, radically. But there were these elements of this you know, wonderful lifestyle and um, that you know, British colony and the way that they lived. And I think it really kind of influenced her, that, that little bit of Asia. And it also it ru you know, it rubbed off on me as well. Um, she, you know, she influenced me definitely because of her taste and her, you know, the way she raised us, and you know, it was yeah, interesting. I'd like to ask on the floor if there's anybody who's interested in children's clothes because it is a huge topic in the luxury world and I think it's very little covered. It's not covered that much in magazines. It's just not discussed very much. Is there any retailer out there maybe who'd like to make their comment, perhaps to say that they, you, you can't sell very expensive clothes for children because they grow so fast? Yes, straight to, can I see somebody ahead of me there? Yes, there's someone straight ahead of me. I can just see in the bright light. No one at us. Hi, it's Livia Firth from Eco H. I wanted to ask um, where you produce your clothes because children's clothes are notoriously the, the most difficult um, in sweatshop culture because most of the brand who produce children's clothes subcontract. So there is never direct contact with the producers. So do you get involved at production level too, and if so, where? Yes, no, very much so. Um, we produce, a, you know, the majority of the brand is, is uh, produced in Portugal and then in Peru because, again, of my South American heritage. So it was very important for me to go and find the right mills. And again, I pay particular attention to how it's made and, and the, you know, legitimacy of the, of the um, factories. Any other questions out there? I'd like to ask a question in, in that case. What do we feel about the cost of children's clothes? You know, there is an element to say that it's, it's wonderful when you have a newborn baby because everybody goes out and buys these wonderful things. In your store, you have these little pack, adorable packages of tiny clothes. 
But it's a little bit different, isn't it, when they get to five and are very messy and they're growing so fast that you know that it's not going to last, unless you have, like yourself, five of them to follow in. Um, do, you think that, do you think that some children's clothes are... I'm not talking about you here, I'm talking about generally. Do you think that there should be really some sort of price element in thinking about buying children's clothes? I think, um, you know, our, our, we're positioned well, I think. We're not, you know, in the high luxury level of children's wear, where you have some outfits that are just, you know, absolutely I mean, crazy expensive. You know, we also look at the, at the quality, a lot of cottons and things that you can wash. We do use cashmeres, you know, and blends. But I always felt, found that cashmere was easier to, to look after and to wash than, than wool. If you don't know how to wash it properly, you can actually shrink the wool and, and there's, you know, wastage. Um, I think that, you know, there are some elements, but there's also the emotional factor as a parent. I know that when I was raising my children, you know, it was, there was, I was so moved to, to, to buy something that, you know, I could imagine on my child. And, and I think there's that element. I mean, parents do want to, you know, to buy something that's, that's cute, or it could be a party dress, or it could be a, a, a new little baby grow that you know, has something that you know, you're going to buy, and you have that element of nostalgia. You, know, you want to remember, you, know, you want to, to create a memory, maybe. Um, in spite of the fact that you are a princess, I wouldn't call your clothes really tiara friendly. When you, <laughs> when you began, I remember that there were some quite sort of very um, fancy, dare I say, lacy dresses and so on. But now it's, it's much more sporty, the clothes, aren't they? And certainly the, the boys' clothes are very good quality, but they're sporty modern clothes, yes? Yes, no, they've always, you know, I always tried to... To, to create a brand that was really a one-stop shop where we could offer everything from jeans to t-shirts to cute little jackets, party dresses, but cute party dresses. You know, I never wanted to be known as a classic brand. I wanted it to be contemporary and up-to-date and fresh and fun. Um, so that's what it is. Um, when it comes to stores across the world, do you think they make enough of children's clothes? Is it increasing? Are they still shoved away on the fourth floor with furs and all sorts of oddities? I mean, you look at you know, the luxury business today and you look at the luxury brands and there's this extension of you know, children's wear. I mean, they have, you know, you have Chloe, you have you know, Stella McCartney kids, you have Missoni, you have Gucci, Burberry. It's, um, I think it's important. I think the, you know, the luxury market has extended into this area. And um, I think you look at you know, Harrods, the children's wear department at Harrods in, in London, it's very prevalent. It's very large. It's you know entire floor. I think there definitely is a huge market there. I have always noticed that in La Rinascente in Milan, that the uh, children's clothes are always uh, almost like a, a replica in a beautiful way of the parents' clothes. Do, do you find that in European countries there are completely different attitudes, perhaps between north and south, or perhaps, I, I might guess, between the different religions, because I think the Catholic religion demands certain clothes for certain events. Do you see the differences, or is it all much the same these days? No, there is, there is a difference. I mean, in America, there's, you know, the, for example, we, I was discussing it this morning, the South, where they dress their kids very well. And then you have, you know, more of the East Coast, where it's a little bit more casual. Then you have the religious factor, you know, where some cultures, you know, they want long sleeve dresses. So there's a little bit of everything in our designs. I'm not going to say that, you know, it's, that we really, really pay specific attention to, you know, to... To, to being able to offer, you know, everything for everybody. But I, in my brand, there's a little bit of, you know, of everything. I'm sure you'll be totally surprised to hear this, but my two London granddaughters are crazy about tiaras. In fact, you know, <laughs> mostly they won't go out without them. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, like I said before, <laughs> every little girl wants to really dress up and, you know, and dress up princess. So every little girl is a princess to Marie Chantal and her Definitely, collection. Yes. Thank you very Thank much you for so talking much, to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so brilliant. Thank you.